Today we're going to learn the basic crowd operation of Firestorm. We will be able to input our name and create a to-do for that name. And that would just generate a random to-do text. We could also read that to print to the console and update it to generate a new to-do. And we can also delete this task. We can also create as many as we want. And this will be directly listened to in the app. And before we begin, just a quick word for my sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare provides over 22,000 lessons in multiple different subjects. Right now, I'm taking the time to learn more on design and also social media, as I've never been good with any of that. If Skillshare is something for you, consider using the link in the description to get two months of free use. When signing up, you are prompted to pay and after two months. But if you don't want to do that, you can also always use the console the subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description and let's get started. We will start off by just creating a new Firebase project. We just name this project to Firebase CRUD for now. We'll start off with Android, so just press the Android icon. Then we need a package name, which can be found in the Android manifest file. We'll just copy it and paste it right in. Then on the next step, we'll just download the Google services JSON. And while that's downloaded, we'll move on to the next step after that. We'll copy the class path, which will be pasted in, in the dependency of the Gradle file. Then we'll just take the apply plugin at the bottom and paste that into the build gradle in the app folder. The next thing we need to do is add our Google services JSON and that will be added to the app folder. For the iOS setup, we will simply add an app and then press on iOS. On this page now, we will need a identifier which we can get from the project and running this command in the terminal. This will open the Xcode and we can see in the general tab the bundle identifier. We'll copy this and paste it into the Firebase site. In the next step, we will get a Google Services Info PLS download. And all the remaining steps we can just go ahead and skip. Now back in the project, we can simply take the Google Services file and paste it into the runner folder. And just make sure that the file is actually in the runner folder and not anything else. We will start off by importing the Firebase package. And after we've done that, we'll go ahead and create an ID. And this ID will just be used for when we create an item. We want to store that ID so we can check if we can use the read uh, button or not. Then we're going to create our instance or reference to the database. We're then actually going to use a form to use as a input field for the database. And then we're going to use have a string name so we can store that value from the form in a variable. We're then going to go ahead and create our form. This form will just take the form key. And I have another video for this one if you haven't used a form before. I will just go ahead and create a method that just returns the form. And all of this code is just provided in the GitHub, so you can see that also how you use that. But this is just a simple form where we have made some decoration and a validator, and we've just checked if the, uh, the form is empty. And if it's not empty, we'll save that into the name variable. Next up, we'll go and create our row. So inside this row, we're going to have two buttons. The first button will be the create data button. And this one will just simply be calling the function which we create the data with our inputted field. And then we have a read button, which will just check if the ID is not equal to null. And if it's equal to null, we will just set the button or unpressed to null itself so it can't be pressed. So let's go ahead and create our, create, uh, create our two methods. So we start off with the create data, and I will just set this to a sync so we don't need a then and catch. I first off check if we have a form key, and if that's validated. 
We then go ahead and if that's validated, we save that into the name variable. We then go ahead and call the database and get the collection. And I've just made a simple collection called CRUD. We then go ahead and add some data. And this data will just be a key of name and then we set the name and a emoji. After that, I use the set state to set the ID at the top that we created before to the reference of the document ID. And then I used to print out the document ID. We can go ahead and do almost the same for the read data. This will just have a type of document snapshot. We call the database and get the collection of CRUD. Then we take the document that we saved when we created the item. And we call get. And as get is a future, we just call await and so we can have the snapshot. And I will also just print the name in the console. If we save this, we have a input field and a create and read. If I go ahead and just create something, we should see that document right in the database. We can see that right here. And if I would create more, it would also just be updated right away in the database. So for the next thing we're going to do is define the column for the cards that will be displayed below these buttons. And to do this, we're using a stream builder. And for the stream, we're actually calling the database collection of CRUD again. And we're just calling snapshot. And snapshot is just a listener so we can get the data as soon as it's updating in the database. We'll create the builder with the context and snapshot. If we have data, we're going to display the column. If we don't have any data, we'll just display a sized box. So for the column, we're going to have children. And instead of defining our children in a method, we're going to use the map function. And with the map function, we can simply use a function on each item in the list. We have to also specify that this map will return a list. And now inside this map function, we can simply call the doc and then just build the item. And we're passing in the doc so we can use that inside the card or the item. So at the top, we define our method called build item, which will just return a card. Inside the parameter, we will take a document snapshot. We start by returning the card and then some padding. After that, we'll create a column and this column will just be for the name and the to do. After that, we will add a row. And inside this row, we will load two buttons again. And the first one is the update data. And the second one is the delete data. And this will be displayed to the right of the name and to do. So let's implement those two. So those two are pretty similar to the create and read. If we check at the update data, we can see that it's very similar to the create one. The only thing different we do is actually calling the update data function. And we're just saying that we want to have the document ID that we are pressing on. And we're going to set the to do to please instead. And for the delete one, we're just simply calling the delete function on the document of the ID we have already gotten. We're then calling set state to set the ID to null so we can disable our read button. And if we also go back to the create data, we will add some variety to our create function. And instead of using a name, we will add a to do. And the to do will just call a function, which is just a random generator for some different strings that we will use in that field. So now if we save this, we can see that we have our name and our name. And to do is null because as we did before, we didn't have a to do. So let's just delete those two. So we can see that when we create, the value is added right away in the database with the name and the to do. We can add as many as we want. We can change the name. And that is displayed right here. We can also delete them, which deletes them right away in the database. We can also update them. So one more thing I haven't showed you yet is use the read button. And this is very simple. When we create some data, this read becomes uh, pressable because we have set the ID in the state. If I would press the read, 
we can see that we display our name in the console. So just to show this again, when I create something, we print out the ID that we just created. And if we read this, this will display the latest one we actually added. If I would delete anyone, the read button would be disabled. If you liked the video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. If it's something you got stuck with, just leave a comment and I'll be sure to check it out. Also, if you want to support me, I've added Patreon and Skillshare down in the description, so be sure to check those out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.